Hey, good morning everybody. Happy Monday. Hey, I don't mean to sound glum. My voice sounds a bit glum because I didn't want to be too overexcited because, well, because it is what it is around here. Sydney people, hey, hang in there. That's all I can say. Melbourne people, I think you're nearly out. Fingers crossed. And the rest of the country, hope you're all hanging in there. But today we are cooking, okay? We're gonna make something super delicious that hopefully uses stuff you've got in your pantry anyway. Um, I think this is stuff that um, I would wanna always have in my pantry so that I can always bake a biscuit or a cake without even having to leave home. That's really a good way to set up your pantry. So we're making um, chocolate biscuits, which I'll tell you about in a second. I'm just waiting for everybody to come in and, and either get a cup of tea and settle down or get ready to cook along with me since I've put all the ingredients on our Instagram. So hopefully you've got some um, ingredients ready in front of you. If not, I'll run through it in a minute. Good morning, good morning. Good to see so many of you here today. Um, it's a beautiful sunny day in Sydney. I went walking this morning and it really felt like spring. But I think the temperature's changing. I can't tell, it keeps going windy and sun then sunny and I'm actually not sure what's going on. How are you all doing? How's everyone doing? Are you all uh, doing okay? Hey Esther in Melbourne, that's my sister. Esther's always on, she's a really good sister. We all need sisters like that. Hey Esther, hey everybody else. Good morning Kez. Kez is like a Sydney sister, she's on a lot as well. Good to see you here Kez. Hope everyone had a good weekend. Hey Lynn, and Lynn is here which I'm particularly excited about but I'll tell you more about Lynn in a moment because she is very connected to these biscuits. Um, that we're going to make. Uh, if anyone's watching from the United States, when I say biscuits, I mean cookies. We call them biscuits here, you know, little snappy discs of goodness, as opposed to your biscuits, which are those delicious scone-like things that I also like. Um, good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. Okay, um, what does um, Gigi Perkins say? We're going to cook along. Oh, someone's eaten the chocolate in their house. Yeah, that's a problem in these times, isn't it? Put things away for another day and then they're suddenly gone. Um, good morning, good morning. Happy Monday to everybody. Is it Monday? We know it's a bit like Groundhog Day. What day is it? But I think it's Monday. And first thing, if you're gonna cook along, put your oven on 180 degrees Celsius, I think, which is about 355 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that um, uh, 350 Fahrenheit, Put your oven on now, that's just a conventional oven temperature. If you've got a really hot fan forced oven and you wanna use the fan, put it on 165, okay? Know your oven, this is the, the temperature that I cook all my cakes on, mostly 180. All right, good morning, good morning. Good to see so many of you coming in. Let's get talking about biscuits. So, um, Lynn Nisolo, who's on today, her, her Instagram is food like home. You should follow her, she makes lots of delicious things. So Lynn was with the Monday Morning Cooking Club for one book, and this is Lynn here, this one here. Um, I know it's back to front, sorry. Anyway, so if you've got the book, Lynn is second to the right between Natanya and me. And Lynn is a gorgeous Sydney girl who we loved having with us for a book. And she's given us so much, but as well as so much, she's given us some amazing recipes. And um, in our second book, she's given us muesli rusks that I make all the time from the feast goes on. We should do those for a cook along one day because they are outstanding. They just take a long time, so you'd have to be with me for 10 hours while we wait for them to cook, which is probably a bit long. No, I could do it, don't know about you though. Who'd be into that? Um, but for the new book, I call it new, it's a year and a bit old, this one, now for something sweet, which happens to be on sale on our website, just saying. Um, Lynn gave us these beautiful biscuits from her granny Anne. And can I just read to you please, because what we do, as well as collecting recipes from around the world and mainly Australia, we also tell stories alongside the recipes. So I want to read you this, it's very short, I'm not going to keep you here for too long, just a little short storytelling session, okay, just for a minute before we get cooking. I just want to read you about her late granny Anne, okay. So it says this, Anne Dibowitz's kitchen was stacked floor to ceiling with biscuit tins filled with beautiful sweet biscuits and slices she had lovingly baked for her precious grandchildren. Anne, 
Granny of past Monday morning cooking club author Lynn Missolo lived in Cape Town and inspired by her Lithu Lithuanian mother's passion for bagels and tagluff, golden syrup pastries, loved to cook. Everywhere she went, she was armed with pen and paper to note down recipes she enjoyed and to share her own recipes with anyone who was interested. She relished time alone in the kitchen, preparing feasts for her family to enjoy when they arrived from Johannesburg for the school holidays. And as Jewish festivals approached, she gathered her friends together and a production line was set up in her garage so they could prepare the traditional dishes side by side. That is a little snippet of Lynn's Granny Anne. And Lynn's Granny Anne used to make these chocolate biscuits. And we're so lucky to have these recipes that are passed down from generation to generation. And now we have them in the books and they're preserved forever. And I'm really proud. That's probably the thing I'm most proud of that Monday Morning Cooking Club does is that we collect these recipes. We, we um, make sure they work properly. We tweak them if we have to and we publish them and share them alongside the story. And Anne Dibowitz is one example of that. And today I'm gonna to share these chocolate biscuits. Now, there's two options here. The original recipe is with cocoa powder and dark chocolate, unsweetened cocoa powder. And I'm gonna call that an adult biscuit in the sense that it is, you have to like dark chocolate to love it. And I was thinking about it last night as I was eating my 53rd biscuit after making a batch this week, that the kids, they might be too strong a flavour for our kids. So I thought, let's try to move this recipe a little bit, make it a little bit more kid friendly. And instead of cocoa powder, today I'm going to use drinking chocolate, which is sweetened chocolate powder that you would use to make a hot chocolate. So if you're gonna use um, cocoa powder, I'll go through the ingredients. If you're gonna use drinking, drinking chocolate, we're gonna use the same amount as cocoa powder, but we're gonna cut out a tablespoon of sugar, okay? It just doesn't need the extra sugar. So let's go through the ingredients we need. And I'm gonna give you the quantities, and if you haven't got them, you can quickly get them ready now, but they'll be listed on the comments section above the comments of this thing when I post it on IGTV. Okay, let's start off with um, 90 grams of unsalted butter, and I want it to be soft, and I want it to be spreadable, okay? That's how soft I want this butter. I want you to be able to smear it on soft white bread and not tear the bread, okay? That's how soft I want this butter. I'm gonna call that softened. If your kitchen's cold and it's hard, put it in the microwave if you've got one for 10 seconds and that'll soften it. We don't want it melted, but we want it soft. Soft. If you don't have a microwave, turn on your stove top and just put the dish, the bowl over it like that for a few seconds to start to soften it. Then we need some chocolate, which we're gonna melt 50 grams. I'm using Lindt dark chocolate, always got packets of it in the pantry. Always buy lots of it when it's on sale at the supermarket, which happens quite often. Uh, 50 grams, which is actually five squares of lint, 70%. Then we have sugar, uh, 75 grams of caster sugar. Again, if you're going to use drinking chocolate instead of cocoa, take a tablespoon off, make it 50 grams, okay? It's a heaped quarter cup of caster sugar if you're using the sweetened chocolate, and it's a third of a cup if you're using unsweetened cocoa. Then flour, plain all-purpose flour. We have, we have got 125 grams, which is three quarters of a cup of plain flour, uh, a good a good pinch of salt, okay? We want a bit of salt in this. So it's an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, which is not just a little tiny pinch, it's like a good solid pinch of salt, or you can use a teaspoon measure, and a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda or bicarb, just to give these biscuits a tiny little bit of a puff. We're gonna make a dough and then we're gonna roll it out. If you don't wanna roll it out, if you can't be bothered, I have got a plan B for you. Um, so don't be afraid of that. Now, I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna melt my chocolate in the microwave. You can do it in a double boiler if you want, but if you just need melted chocolate for a quick biscuit or a cake, I find the microwave works a treat. And as long as you don't overdo it, it's fine. It just, it's just, I find it easy. So I'm just gonna put it in for 30 seconds and that's it where I'm going to start. So, however you want to melt your chocolate, you can get a saucepan of boiling water, you can put a bowl on top and you can put your chocolate in there as well. Do it that way. But I'm trying to avoid getting out another saucepan. I think you know what I mean. All right, so chocolate's melting, that's fine. What we're going to do is beat together the butter and the sugar, which is often how biscuits and cakes start anyway. 
So I've got my butter, which is softened or at room temperature, but I want it soft, as I said earlier, and my, sh and my sugar. I'm using caster sugar. Always use caster sugar for baking because it's got a finer grain and I tend to think, I think it tends to dissolve quicker. Let's see how the chocolate's going. I always do it in 30 seconds or increments because, you know, the time that I put it in for two minutes and forget about it, it explodes all over the oven and I don't want that. I'm going to use an electric mixer today, handheld, because I'm feeling, hmm, I just can't be bothered mixing it with a wooden spoon today. Is that bad? And I'm just a bit tired. It's been a busy weekend. So I'm going to take a shortcut and use this. And you can do whatever you like. You can do it in the stand mixer with a paddle. You can do it by hand with a wooden spoon. Or you can use these things, which I find easy when you want a super shortcut. Okay, let me see how the chocolate's going. Okay, so it's starting to melt. It's going to need another, I'm going to put it in for another 20. And just keep doing it like that. Okay, is everyone who's cooking along following me? Just give me a thumbs up. Just tell me somebody is following along and I am not, haven't lost you already. If you're cooking along, have your oven on 180 Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit, because we're going to cook them and they only take 10 minutes to cook. All right, I'm going to put this on and give it a bit of a whiz. I'm looking for creamed butter, so I want it to be soft and smooth, okay? Butter and sugar, yum. Turn it up a bit, sorry about the noise. You can do this by hand, as I said, this is a really good arm work. I'm not feeling it this way, no. Alright, I'm going to put this. Okay, how are we going? How are we going? All good? Alright. Let's have a look at our chocolate. Okay, I'm going to give it another. 20 seconds and that'll be it. So it's probably been about one and a half minutes all up, okay? Everyone going all right? Good, all right. So we're creaming together the butter and the sugar. And what we're looking for is just a bit paler than the butter was and creamy. down, get everything from the edges of the bowl, sides of the bowl. See, it's already lovely and creamy and light, okay? And that will do. You can see you could easily do that by hand. Chocolate is in the microwave. Now I'm going to sift together all the dry ingredients. Serves two purposes. Number one, most important for biscuits, it mixes everything really well together because you don't want the, the chocolate in one section and the flour in the other when you make your dough. You don't have to work your dough hard to mix it in that way. It's better to mix the dry ingredients. So I'm going to put in here, I'm just using a fine sieve or colander. You can use one of those sieves like the old fashioned ones, or you can put them in a bowl and use a whisk if that's easier for you. Flour, drinking chocolate, or cocoa if you're using. And the amount of cocoa or drinking chocolate, which I did not say, is an eighth of a cup, which I wrote, which is actually um, a silly thing. This is half the recipe of the original. It's actually 30 mils, which is one and a half tablespoons, okay, of cocoa or drinking chocolate. I'm gonna put our baking soda in there, the quarter teaspoon. And I'm not gonna put the salt in because, yet because what happens with the salt is that it just stays in the sieve. This is too fine and it doesn't go through. So I'm gonna put the salt into my butter mixture and give that a mix through, okay. If you're using salted butter, which of course you can, if that's what you've got, don't add any salt. And the reason we use unsalted butter is so you can control the amount of salt you put in. Because once it's salted butter, it is what it is. Okay, we're going to just mix these together by sitting it like this. This is such a great dough to work with, you'll see. It's like chocolate, it's like delicious chocolate Play-Doh actually. That's what I thought yesterday when I was playing with it. All right. That's done. All right, how are we going? Let me just check this for a sec. Sorry. Yeah, see, for some reason, I don't know why the, um, the feed stops. I don't know if anyone knows the answer to that, but there were lots of comments and they just don't come up and I don't see them, which is a bit difficult. And I'm sorry, I'm not ignoring you. I just didn't see it. But hey, thanks for all those thumbs up. Okay, I've got my butter and sugar and salt 
cream together nicely so it's a lovely soft creamy mixture. I've got my dry ingredients there and now I'm going to see how my chocolate is. And my chocolate is very nicely melted now. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to add the chocolate to the butter mixture, okay? Use my trusty silicon spatula that gets every, every last bit out. Okay, great. Yum. Someone will look at that later. And just give that a mix, okay? My chocolate's not that hot because I just did it slowly in the microwave and I just did it till it was just melted, okay? Um, you don't need to, to microwave the hell out of it. You can just do it very slowly. All right, so I've got a lovely chocolate mixture and now I'm going to fold in my dry ingredients. I always do it half at a time. Just it makes it a bit easier. It doesn't overwhelm the mixture. It's a very, very easy and quick dough. And when you make it yourself without me standing here talking about all sorts of things, you'll see it's a really quick recipe. I promise you that. But hey, we're all in this together to kill an hour or half an hour, right? Because hmm, some of us are feeling the pain of this lockdown and I think company is good for all of us, really. I, I feel it anyway. I, I, do, I do this because I love you hanging out with all of you every day. For me, it's, it's a joy and it helps my lockdown experience be much better. So thank you to all of you. Um, okay, so question there. Oven temps are always conventional um, for me. It's a funny story because my oven actually is on the fan, but my, I've got a 20 year old oven and it was before fan force was really a thing. And I find that my fan temperatures are the same as conventional for the new wave of fan forced ovens. Um, so for a fan forced oven, you should probably do 65, 165 for this. Um, should you let the, um, the chocolate cool? You know what, I didn't. And my chocolate wasn't boiling, boiling hot, and it was fine. You could let it cool for a minute if you find your chocolate is very hot, but it didn't matter, it didn't melt the butter. So I mixed it quickly and added the flour, okay? And then it's gonna be a lovely warm dough that'll just make you so happy to touch it and roll it. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay, so I'm just scraping this with my spatula, getting all the dough till it comes together. Taste this dough, okay? I just want you people who are tasters, I know not everybody likes a little taste, but I love it. Taste it, it's really good. It's really, really good and so easy to make. You don't even need the electric mixer. I feel bad now that I got it out, but you know what? Hey, just feeling lazy this morning. Um, okay, so this is pretty good. I'm happy with this. This has come together really nicely, okay? Can you see this? It looks like, it looks like chocolate dough, and it tastes delicious. Absolutely, absolutely delicious. All right, dough is done. That's it. Now, if you don't want to make all the biscuits, you can cut the dough in half and freeze it. I would pat it into a round, wrap it in plastic wrap and put it in, label it. Don't forget to label it and freeze it. I had a little bit of a clean out of my freezer last night and I thought to myself, why do I freeze some things? Like I know when I freeze them that I'm going to throw them out. Does everybody do that? You know, you put it in a thing, you label it, you go, yep, yep. Pea and lamb soup, yep, gonna defrost that one day. And then three years later, you look at it and think, what was I thinking? So <laughs> the other thing I do is I put it in the fridge and I don't label. I think I'll remember that that's dough for that tart. And then I'll look six months later and I've got no idea what it is. So freeze and label, even if you are gonna throw it out in six months. Dough's ready, let's talk about the next step. Just gonna put this away, clean up my mess for one minute, just so I've got room, okay? Because we're going to roll it out. Some of you are scared of rolling. Don't be. This is a really, really nice dough to roll. You're going to need a rolling pin. You're going to need some flour um, to put on your rolling pin. You're going to need a cookie cutter or a biscuit cutter. I've got these great ones, which I love. bought them a while ago from, I think, William Sonoma. The brand is Dubaya, B-U-Y-E-R. And they're just a bunch of round cookie cutters. And I'm going to use this size, which is small. I 
can't tell you how big it is. It's probably three centimetres. Because I want little cookies. Okay, cookie cutter, rolling pin. We need some baking paper. I'm just going to get it, sorry, forgot. Because if you roll this out on the bench, they're just going to, I don't want to put too much extra flour, so I'm just going to put baking paper down on the bench to roll it on and a little bit of extra flour on the top. You'll need a baking tray, a large one. I'm going to do a small batch so I can show you how they cook for 10 minutes and what you do next. So I'm just going to do a, like six, put them in the oven quickly while we roll the rest. Everyone with me. Rolling pin, baking paper, cookie cutter, flour for sprinkling, and of course your delicious chocolate biscuit dough. Okay, so just a little bit of baking paper on the bench. And I'm going to just take a little bit of that dough. doesn't need resting or anything, which is just fabulous. And it's actually, look how nice it is. It's not sticky. That's the texture of your dough. It doesn't even stick to my hand. Um, yeah, so Wendy asks, where is my helper? Which helper today? See, I have no one. My kids are all working today. All the ones that are home anyway. Yeah, no helper. Here on my own. Dogs are asleep. Just me. Okay, there we go. That's what it should look like, all right? Not sticky, lovely, perfect. Hopefully you've weighed your ingredients so that they're precise and that's what your dough should look like. Okay, so I've taken a bit. I'm going to put it on the baking paper. I'm going to get my rolling pin and I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my rolling pin. Okay, generous, like quite generous and a little bit on top of the dough. And I'm just going to press it to start with. And then I'm going to start rolling. And you can feel if it starts sticking straight away, you know you need a tiny bit more flour. You just need to feel it as you go. I find rolling such a lovely, lovely therapeutic thing to do. I don't know if you do. Some I know are scared of rolling, and as soon as they see that they've got a roll out dough, they freak out. But I want to be here to urge you to just take the time and do it. It is lovely. It's really lovely. And I love using a cookie cutter. Just a fun thing to do. All right. So we want them to be quite thin because I want these biscuits to be a bit snappy. Um, I don't want them to be like like that. When you bend them, I want them to be like snap. Not like a honey snap snap, but almost, okay? Pretty snappy. And roll it out to about, yeah, I'm gonna say two to three millimeters, okay? If you want them a bit thicker, that's also fine. I, I'm not gonna be the biscuit police here. Um, and I'm not going to tell you how thick to make it, but just be aware that if you cook, if you roll them thicker, you're going to have to cook them possibly longer than the 10 minutes, and you'll have to be the judge of that. Take your cookie cutter and your tray. I'm going to put my tray here. And if you've got like a little um, pallet knife or something, what did I do with mine? I had it this morning. Okay, I've only got my big one, so that's fine. The pallet knife is really helpful for this job too cookie cutter and make your circles okay sometimes it does come out with the when you do it and then you can just plop it on the thing but this dough doesn't seem to so we're just making circles like that I'm not going to do it all you should continue doing it because I want to show you the next step and I don't want you to have to be here with me all day um, and then I'm going to take that and I'm just going to flip it onto the thing the reason I flip it is, oh, I don't know why, because I think I don't want to see the extra flour on the top, so if I put it on the bottom, I don't see it, and it's just easier to get it off the off the palette knife, rather than sliding it, which you might bend the biscuit, flipping it just makes it easier, I think. So flip, these aren't gonna spread a huge amount, they're just gonna puff up a tiny bit, just like puff, like that, okay? I like to line them up nicely. See, I've squished that one, that's not ideal. Um, I learned a good lesson yesterday, yesterday though, because I did a, a chiffon class on Zoom, which was really, really fun and fabulous. I thought everyone really enjoyed it, as, as I did. And we did, while the cakes were in the oven, I made some Dutch spice biscuits with everyone. I said, now don't crowd them on the pan, because what happens is they join. Anyway, so what did I do? In my excitement to get them in the oven, I crowded them on the pan, and I ended up pretty much with a tray of, uh, it was almost like one joined tray of biscuits. Um, and I, and when I broke them apart, they were pretty much square biscuits. So there you go. There's a lesson. 
So I'm going to spread these out nicely. These aren't going to spread as much as those got, those did. And yeah, I can't do ten on a on a plate on a tray. It's not even. I'm going to bake those nine, and I'm going to put them in my oven for ten minutes. And I'm going to continue rolling the rest while they're in the oven. And I'm going to show you Plan B if you don't want to roll. Them. And I'm going to put it on for 10 minutes, all right? So I'm not expecting that you guys will be putting yours in the oven yet because we're still rolling. I used to have a really great timer, really great timer, and it fell off the wall and smashed. And so I bought this one, and it's like a sh shitty version of that good one. And it's just not very good. just have to tell you that. Okay, so... Um, okay, so yours are sticking to the paper. All right, so perhaps you're pressing too hard with your rolling pin. You can also stick, to sprinkle a bit of um, flour onto your paper before rolling, okay? So that's probably one of those two things. So I'm going to put aside the scraps for the moment. I just want them to sit on the bench and relax a little bit and rest while I roll the rest out, okay? So I'm not rolling my scraps out yet. I'm going to roll the rest, all right? Now... If you don't want to roll, I have a solution, I think. Let's see. What I did yesterday when I made a batch is that I made a log with some of my dough and I rolled it in plastic wrap because I want to see, and it was in the fridge and it got really hard, of course, because it's got butter in it. Um, and I want to see if I can slice it. I need a knife. One just here. Let's see if we can avoid rolling and what happens. You want it to be a hard log because if it's soft, it'll just squish and they won't be circles, okay? So let's see. This may or may not work. It's very hard to slice them super thinly because it tends to crack. It's actually not too bad, I have to say. What do you think? So there's a solution. I'm going to try another knife though. Maybe a shot. Uh, Alright. I'm just trying to work out the best knife to cut this log if we want to do it in the log way. So your log needs to be soft enough that your knife slides through, but not too soft that it squishes. Okay, so honestly, I would prefer to roll. Is anyone there anti rolling? Any anti rollers there who don't want to roll? This is what you need to do. They're not going to look as good because they're not going to be a perfect round shape. But I think it's not a bad option, okay? If you don't have a rolling pin, guess what you can use? A wine bottle. Works perfectly, with or without wine in it. Um, okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do that now. We're going to roll out the rest. So that's how I would deal with it if you didn't want to roll. But it is a bit more challenging to get them thin. All right, I'm going to put that aside for the moment and keep on winding back on it. Right, continue rolling. So, for those of you who said that they found it stuck to the thing, just put a little bit of flour onto the baking paper first, okay? Just a little bit. And then again, flour your rolling pin. We're not squishing it, okay? We're doing a really gentle, you're sort of treating this dough with respect and being very gentle with it, okay? We're not trying to squish it. We're not trying to even press it. We're just gently, gently thinning it out. Think gentle when you roll, okay? There's no need to do it really hard. The dough is so lovely and malleable that it's a pleasure to roll. And if you don't press too hard, I think you'll, you won't have a sticking problem, okay? Again, cookie cutter and just press it in. Sometimes it does stick to the thing, which is great. You can plop it straight onto your um, cookie tray, on your baking sheet. Okay, but I'm not going to do that now because I want to show you what we do with the scraps. So I'm just going to finish. It's funny they're sticking because there's more flour. And the thicker it is, the, the easier, the, the more they'll stick inside the cookie cutter like that. Okay, so everyone just cut out your shapes. Use your palette knife again to move them out of the way. Did I put the timer on? Yep, yeah, they're nearly there. Now, the beauty about these is that when the biscuits come out of the oven, we're going to roll them in some caster sugar. And 
I just love that extra little fine grained crunch that you get from the sugar. It just feels so lovely. It reminds me of a, um, I don't know if any of you are fans of those hot jam donuts from the donut trucks. I used to go to one in Melbourne with my dad in the, in the 70s and used to buy it in a hot paper bag and they were really hot little jam donuts covered in sugar, white sugar. And used to take a bite and, and the sugar goes all over your lips and oh, remember those? I think I need to make a batch actually. We've got a recipe in the now for something sweet for jam donuts with sugar. Do I want to make a batch though? That's the question. Who's gonna who's gonna make if I did it on one of these, who would do it with me? The problem is what do we do for two hours while they're rising? That's the issue, alright. I'm just coming here to see what's going on with all of you. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, I'm just not seeing your comments and I really don't know what to do about that. I don't know if anybody is uh, it's got a, got a solution for me. Well, now it's moving, so that's great. Okay, thank you. You're sharing the method. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, jam donuts. We should do jam donuts. We'll have to do like two or three, maybe two sessions, like one like at 10 o'clock and then 12 o'clock once the dough's risen, fry them off um, and put the jam inside. What I like about the recipe we've got is that the jam is cooked inside the donut, so the jam is hot when you eat it rather than injecting it in afterwards, which I don't like as much. Okay, so how are we going? Everyone should be rolling out their cookies, their biscuits, little rounds like that, putting them on your tray and putting them in the oven for 10 minutes. Um, I might as well finish this because we've got a few more minutes before they come out of the oven. I'm gonna get some caster sugar ready. If you find your dough is too sticky, just add a tiny bit more flour, but it really shouldn't be. Like it's not, a tiny bit's gone onto my hands, but pretty much it's not. It's a quite a, dry is the wrong word, but it's not a particularly sticky dough, okay? So if your dough is sticky, then there's, you've got to recheck your measurements of all the ingredients. I think that's probably the best thing I can say. Okay, I think we've got a lot of people who want jam donuts. Yeah, let's do them next week. I think we're still going to be in lockdown next week here in Sydney. And you know what? I think next week we're really going to need jam donuts. I will anyway. The problem though, as we all find, is everyone says to me all the time, I want to bake with you, I want to bake, but the problem is I just eat it. And I, I hear you, I actually hear you. Um, it's a problem. So what's the solution? I have a really good solution for you. Bake, 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 wrap everything up when it's cool and deliver it to your neighbours. Put it outside their gate. How about that? Is that a good thing to do? Um, okay, so yes, Julia says that's a good thing. You can roll out in two, between two sheets of baking paper. I don't love doing that though. I know that um, Marilyn and Natanya, two of my co-authors, love doing that. I like to see what I'm rolling. I like to feel the rolling pin on the thing. Um, unless it's really impossible to roll out and you have to do that, my preference is not to do it. Personal thing, you know, if you want to put it in between, go ahead. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. More workouts and walks in between jam, jam donuts. I think that's the answer actually to everything. Um, okay, so cookies rolled in the oven. I'm going to get some caster sugar now because I want to show, I'll finish this later, uh, with the scraps, which I've put into a ball. At the end of all your rolling, you can then roll them out. They'll be fine. Um, the thought is with biscuit dough or pastry particularly, when you reuse scraps, they get overworked and they're tougher. But if you just let them sit on the bench for five minutes while you do this, then it sort of lets them rest and lets the gluten relax and whatever it has to do. Okay, that's my thought about the cookies. I'm gonna just put that in there and come back to them later. And it's a funny thing about delivering to neighbors. I could, I've always got cakes and things, but it's sort of weird to deliver to people if you don't really know them. Do you think they'd eat it? Would you eat something delivered by your neighbor? Yes, probably. As long as you knew they were your neighbors, I guess it would be fine. All right, cast the sugar. Grab some cast the sugar from your cupboard and put it on a plate um, or a flat top roll. It doesn't have to be a plate. I'm just gonna put a bit in here. And just a spoon of it, a couple spoons. There is a measurement in the recipe. Is there two tablespoons for coaching, okay? And as soon as they come out of the oven, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. So we're ready for the next step. They're gonna come out of the oven. I've got my cast of sugar. Yeah, Dorothy, you're right. That's how you get to know your neighbours, by delivering things. Yeah, I think round here, um, I would say where I live, 
I know some of the neighbours and the others, we, we don't, we just don't know them. So I think I've got to do that. Mm. We had some new neighbours move in like three houses down, three houses down. And I thought of taking something in when they moved. I think they moved two years ago. And I thought about it and I thought about it and then I was embarrassed and then I didn't and whatever. And now it's too late and I sort of wish I had. And I think it's a really nice thing to do. So there's someone building across the road and as soon as they move in, I'm going to take them something and I'm going to drop it in and say, hey, neighbour. I think that, you know, we can learn from our mistakes, right? It's too late to drop it into the people who were there for two years, isn't it? Yeah. You might say it's never too late, but I think it's actually too late. Um, okay, I've got 12 seconds. My things are coming out of the oven. Let's have a look. Uh, yep, they look great. So, that is my timer. So, remember, when you put yours in the oven, put your timer on for 10 minutes, and you'll see what they look like now. Okay. I just love making things that take 10 minutes to cook. It just is such a joy. No waiting around. It's just done, just like that. Okay, I want you to get a um, rack, which I just happen to have here, a wire rack, and your caster sugar, and move that over. It's hot, yes. And wait for them to cool for a couple minutes because you want to be able to touch them, okay? But as you can see, they're, they're a bit soft. Biscuits are always soft when they come out of the oven, even if they're going to be the crispest things, okay? So, um, that's just what it looks like. It is got quite dark. It is chocolate already. Um, okay, but that's the biscuit. As it cools, as soon as I can touch it, um, I'm going to show you what to do. I just want to answer. Oh, thank you, Lynn. So, Lynn, who this, if you've just come in or after the intro, this is a recipe from my good friend Lynn's grandmother, Anne. Lynn was a Monday Morning Cooking Club gal with us for our third book. And this is a recipe from her granny Anne. And um, yeah, Anne would be cavelling, yeah, I'm sure, which means like enjoying watching this from up there. So we love this. We love the passing down of recipes and stories. And it brings people, it, it, you know, Anne's in the kitchen with me today. And I never knew her, but I think that's what food does. And I love it. Um, Judy Fleischman, the full ingredients are listed on our Instagram. Um, on our Insta story highlights on the Instagram post from today. And when this is posted to IGTV, which will be immediately after I finish, the recipe will be posted there. Not the method, just the um, ingredients. If you want the full recipe, and this is half the original, you need to go to the book. It's from our latest book, Now For Something Sweet. It's in that full recipe on sale now on our website. Okay, back to the biscuits. So I'm gonna take it, and I want this to be while it's still warm because I want them to stick a little bit, okay? And I'm just gonna put it in, just one side, and then put it on my on my rack, just like that. Okay, and I just love how they look. They are really the most delicious, simple, unique. There aren't a lot of biscuits around like this, I have to say, chocolate biscuits. And I, I'm really happy to have this recipe and I'm really happy to share it with you today. The recipe says it makes, this half quantity makes about 60 biscuits. If they're small and they're thin, don't worry if you make a bit, if you know, if you don't make quite as many as that, it doesn't matter. And it depends on what size you roll them. I roll them this tiny little three centimetre, which I love. It's like two little mouthfuls with a cup of tea. It's perfect. All right, how's that? How do they look? I think they look really good. That's a nice photo, which I'm going to take afterwards. So that is my chocolate biscuits finished and done. Honestly, without all my crapping on, it's a recipe that takes five minutes to make the dough, five minutes to roll them out, and 10 minutes to cook. And then they may maybe need 20 minutes to cool. They can be wrapped up and delivered to neighbors or friends in no time. And I hope that we are starting a movement of doing that, of baking and delivering. I'm going to be inspired by that and actually go and do some deliveries around my neighbourhood today. Um, I want to just tell you what we're doing tomorrow. Tomorrow we are making, again, it's a cake that uses everything you have in your pantry. It has buttermilk in the recipe, so if you can get some buttermilk, it'll be better. If not, we can use milk with some lemon or vinegar. It is There is an option B with that one. 
but if you can get some buttermilk, it's great. It's a cocoa cake, doesn't have chocolate in it, and it has this amazing glaze that you put on when the cake is warm and it's bloody delicious. Makes a great birthday cake. It's great to decorate it with honeycomb or Maltesers or whatever you want. It's a quick cake, takes 20 minutes to cook and, and five minutes to make. So I'm really excited to share that with you tomorrow. And the other thing is on Thursday night, I'm not doing a Thursday morning session this week because on Thursday night, I'm doing a really exciting collaboration with my friend Michael Rantizi, chef at Keppel Street Kitchen. And we are doing, we are making dinner with you. So you can go onto the Keppel Street Kitchen website. It says cooking class and click on that. You have three options. You can order the ingredients in Sydney and get them delivered. You can order the ingredients in Sydney and get them and pick them up yourself from Keppel Street Kitchen. Or you can just sign up for the class, which is just $25 to get the recipes and follow along. At 5.30 on Thursday, we're cooking through the menu. It's a beautiful menu. Entree is, is pita with um, falafel that you're going to fry yourself and dips. Main course is a blue-eye travella and chickpea tagine with couscous on the side. And dessert I'm doing, which is a Queen Elizabeth tart, which is a beautiful date and walnut cake with a crispy topping that you make under the griller served with creme fraiche. It's a great menu. Please sign up. You have to, if you want the ingredients, you need to sign up by Tuesday afternoon because they've got to order it and package it and stuff. And it comes to you all packaged and ready to go. Like really, um, I think it's a win. I can't wait to, to cook Michael's main course and, um, and my dessert as well, but I've made that before. So I'm more excited for his food that I haven't had. So please sign up if you can. It'll be really fun. There's only a limited number of packs available. So if you're keen, get in early. And that's it from me today. I'm going to head off and I'm looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow at 11.30. We're going to make this delicious, quick glazed chocolate cake. And there's lots more chocolate stuff coming the rest of the week. You'll see every day on our Instagram and Facebook, we post the ingredients for the next day. If you want to look ahead for the week, they're on our Insta story highlights. It says lockdown week number three. Um, thank you, everybody. I'm sorry if I didn't um, answer your questions. I only now only going now. It's all going beautifully. Um, it's not that I haven't seen. I, ha I don't want to answer. It's just that I missed it. So I'm sorry. So thanks all. Stay safe. Please go get vaccinated. Do what you've got to do, and just stay safe and stay home. Hugs from me and kisses and happy cooking. See you all, guys. Bye.